Hey, what's going on Shroom Keepers? It is Wednesday. Uh, I just want to do a quick fun video and talk about something I normally don't talk about, uh, rabbit snails. And uh, I've been having a lot of fun breeding these guys. I figured I might as well share a little bit of my success with you guys, tell you how I did it, and, uh, and just show you some love. And so I figured there'd be something cool to talk about on a, on a Wednesday. Uh, another announcement I want to make is I'm going to start a new series called Fish Room Friday. And uh, what this is going to be, I, I went to Columbus this past weekend, uh, visited a lot of hobbyist fish rooms, got five awesome videos of some crazy fish rooms. And so I want to post those. I also have some, uh, some local friends that have some really good fish rooms, so I want to share those as well. So this is going to be about a three-month series, uh, maybe longer if I can continue to get content for it. And uh, it's just going to be a cool, um, just kind of different thing for, for our channel because uh, we get to see um, different side of the hobby because we're like I'm so focused on shrimp that I don't even think about fish and all the other stuff but there's still some really cool stuff out there so I want to share that with you guys so stay tuned for Fish Room Friday it's either starting this coming Friday or next Friday and uh, it's gonna be a great series it's gonna be a lot of fun but let's go ahead and get into uh, some different rabbit snails tanks let's start off with my favorite the yellow rabbit snail uh, these guys are in with orange-eyed blue tigers right now. Um, they do really good with shrimp. I personally believe that the poop of the rabbit snail is like amazing for shrimp. It, the bacteria filled into it. Um, the snails can digest foods quicker than the shrimp can. Uh, for example, I feed these guys Indian almond leaves, and um, they just they go bonkers over them. Within, I would say, a week, the whole Indian almond leaf is gone. Whereas shrimp, they don't eat the Indian almond leaf, they eat the biofilm that grows on it. And so it's a lot different of a process. So they're getting that bacteria that's breaking down through the shrimp's poop. Uh, they're getting that quicker. And so it's, it's just a really good balance. Um, the other thing to note is that the rabbit snails, everyone says they need high temperature water. Um, as you can see, there's, there's babies throughout this tank. And uh, I'm breeding these guys in a temperature of 72 uh, to 74 where most people say they need 82 or 84 and so just a little bit of knowledge there and uh, again these are the yellow rabbit snails um, I do not sell these guys yet I just don't have enough of them uh, but I plan to sell them in the future they're just such slow growers so it, it takes a while but let's go ahead and move on to the next tank all right so again this is a uh, yellow rabbit snail colony this is uh, my second colony and as you can see these guys are breeding well I mean they're so cool like just to get a close-up on them they're such an interesting snail and I uh, usually you don't see as as beautiful as snails another cool thing to note about these guys is they only have maybe one to two babies a month and so they're not gonna like po uh, populate the tank super quick uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing they're not gonna take over but again if you're trying to breed them it just takes a long time and so again, this is this is my favorite species of uh, rabbit snails, at least ones that I keep and breed currently. So let's go ahead and move on to another tank. Okay, so I got more uh, yellow rabbit snails in this colony. Um, I keep these with yellow shrimp, and they do pretty good. Um, they're you know I every tank that I keep them with that has shrimp in them, they they do really really well. And so I definitely highly recommend keeping these guys with sand, just because they like to burrow in the substrate a little bit and uh, it just gives them some uh, some freedom and so those are all the yellow snails or yellow rabbit snails that I keep current colonies uh, but I do keep some chocolate so let's look at that tank so currently this is my best colony of uh, chocolate rabbit snails um, just I, I don't know what it is but they they've been thriving down here uh, there's not many adults in this tank I think there's only four but uh, the babies just keep pumping out so you can see there's babies everywhere. Um, one thing that people ask me is how can you tell the difference between them and Malaysian trumpet snails? And the way that you can tell is the, the shell is a lot darker on uh, rabbit snails. And it's, uh, it really doesn't have much texture to it when, it's, when they're younger. It's almost like a flat shell. Like if we can get a close up on this one. There's a shrimp in the way, but it's honestly like, once you have a baby, you'll be able to tell. Like That looks nothing like a Malaysian trumpet snail. And you might have to keep both um, to really tell the difference. But let me see if I can find a tank of Malaysian trumpet snails and really showcase the difference between them. Okay, so here's a Malaysian trumpet snail. As you can see, it's got uh, more of a texture. It's more of the spiral and cone point 
Uh, the baby rabbit snails are a lot fatter and skinnier, like shorter. Like they're almost stubby. Where this one comes to a very defined point and uh, it's got a lot more texture to it. So that's one way to tell. Um, the other way to tell is by the actual body. Um, Malaysian trumpet snails, they have a different look as far as um, their actual body goes, whereas the rabbit snails uh, look a little bit different. Uh, again, I don't have a good picture to highlight that. Uh, you just have to own them to really be able to tell. But let's look at my last type of rabbit snails. It is the white spotted rabbit snail. Okay, so these guys are really cool because they're, they're a lot bigger. There's a lot more texture to their shell. Um, I haven't got these guys to breed yet, um, but I'm still playing with things. These guys might need a higher temperature. Uh, I've kept them at 72 for the past six months, and, uh, and they're still alive. They're still doing good. Um, they're just not breeding yet. So I'm going to continue to work with these guys, but let me, let me just show you them. I mean, they're... They're probably one of my favorite rabbit snails. Not my favorite. The yellow is my favorite, but I mean, they're just so cool. Uh, I think there's four in here currently. Uh, maybe a fifth one hiding around somewhere. But uh, these guys just have a lot of character to them. They're, they really make a tank pop when you're looking at it. And so I highly recommend getting these guys. Again, uh, any normal shrimp setup is going to work. I wouldn't recommend these guys for a pH less than seven just because it will start corroding their shell. Uh, so stick to the higher pH water that the Neos are good with. And so all in all, the rabbit snail is a perfect inhabitant uh, for a shrimp tank. They're shrimp safe, the poop's great for the shrimp, the bio, the bio load that they provide is extremely useful for from keeping a tank from recycling. Um, the benefits are endless and they're not gonna repopulate quickly. And so I highly re recommend you guys getting these. I currently do not sell them. Uh, but hopefully once I get a higher population going, I will start selling them and I'll let you guys know when that happens. But hopefully you enjoy this little different video, uh, something other than shrimp. Uh, you guys make it a great week and I will talk to you either Friday or Saturday. Later.